Alrighty, welcome back for another episode of some, uh, I don't know, we'll just say humble beginnings. Uh, it's going to be another uh, turn zero, turn one strategy guide. Um, this time going back into the well for Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, was kind of sitting around thinking recently. Uh, I've had a bit of time on my hands. I ended up getting a second round of COVID, which not as bad as the first time. Got to say, uh, you know, 3.7 stars out of 10. Easy, though. Uh, but uh, that being said, uh, it woke up in a fever dream one night. And I was like, you know, I feel like there's got to be a way where I can do some more strategy guides with Guardians that are just not focused on their crisis. And maybe we can start focusing on some crises that uh, we're not going to be good at or maybe something that our opponents are really going to want to play against us. And so... You know, naturally, the first thing that pops into my head if you're a Guardians player on something you don't necessarily want to see, it's it's D-shapes. Um, I think it's it's one of the secures that we can kind of have a hard time, uh, quote-unquote, winning. Um, and on this one, you can tend to follow behind a bit uh, because your opponent's going to kind of have their back point. They're going to have that. You're going to have yours. But more importantly, like, you know, our range models can kind of get stuck on the back point and not really able to contribute and it can, you know, spread apart your team. Now I used to really love uh, C shapes because you could spread apart a team. And I, sometimes I really liked working uh, opposing flanks and, and avoiding the center. Right. Um, but the real advantage of that is, you know, like you're not having to leave somebody back on your D point. Like you just, you can't give that away. So, uh, that VP around away because odds are we're probably going to be losing the scoring on one of the flanks. Um, it's just the way that this crisis tends to work out with the way that some of the teams play them. They're going to come in with good control and usually decent survivability. And when you're thinking riots, you know, the first things that should be coming to mind should be, you know, Kingpin criminal syndicate, ex excellent scoring team, very durable. Uh, they're going to have throws, they're going to have, you know, their pushes and, and, uh, you know, with some models like Ulic and stuff like that, decent, you know, mobility to get around these points. The other, uh, team that really comes to mind from a scoring standpoint is going to be, uh, web warriors. They can rotate around this, uh, shape, uh, and really rapid order due to some of their movement abilities. And they, under a miles leadership can, uh, bring some pretty decent survivability. And then when you, add on to the healing that these canisters can provide uh, can be a real load to deal with them on here. So, you know, if you're a Guardians player, uh, what they've got the ability to potentially displace some of your models and this and that, you know, it, it can be a bit rough. So what you typically want to make sure that you're doing here is that you're, you're going to be at least breaking even on secures. And, you know, if you're playing on this and if you're a Guardians player, Lord, I, I hope that it wasn't your uh, secure because it's it's not good for this team. Um, so more often than not, like you've uh, potentially lost priority or because uh, a lot of times people are going to choose uh, not to play against us on demons um, or uh, intrusions or uh, I don't think people realize how bad of a matchup Infinity is for them yet. But uh, maybe someday as uh, word gets around, Guardian's pretty good on that too. Like you know, um, that it'll be avoided. But yeah, a lot of times people are going to avoid your, your secures. Uh, it's not often you'll play against an opponent that is, is going to take a look at what you're bringing from a crisis standpoint with most guardians teams and say, you know what? I want to play them on demons or run that 33% chance. Right. So a lot of times your, your opponent, when they have priority will choose their secures. So we're going to, in this particular game, we're going to choose that. That is the case. And so, um, Obviously, that would leave us with our extracts. If you're running my team, that's going to give you uh, alien ships, legacy virus, and uh, research station. Um, you know, uh, if you've seen recent videos, you've seen uh, that I've done something on research station. It's essentially a secure of itself, uh, in and of itself, I should say, which is correct term. Um, Ma's a specialist on it. Um, I think Cosmic Ghost Rider is also great. The turn one, uh, turn two and beyond pressure that these guys just provide there is just um, fantastic for Guardians uh, and anybody who's got these guys in their rosters, but can be really devastating for Guardians in particular because if you win the Researcher on uh, turn one, it, it just really can 
create like a snowballing effect as you move that thing backwards. So uh, when I did this video, I didn't just want to just choose one of my random secures because if I get researcher, then, you know, like all bets are kind of off on me playing a fair game on the secures. I'm just going to win my back point. Um, and I'm just going to probably win the researcher and I'll leave the sides to them and they can score their three points and I'll score my three points. And then it'll just comes down to who's better at killing the other. And I think I'm pretty confident in my ability to do that, um, especially if I'm concentrated in one area and they're having to come at me. Uh, so um, it's, you know, that would be an ideal situation. So I think I wanted to avoid that. So uh, I popped out one of the others. And um, for this video, we are going to be playing on Riot Spark. And Deadly Legacy. So the reason I liked uh, Legacy over Alien Ships uh, is because it's got a different threat level. And uh, obviously this can lead a little bit more into some of our turn zero tactics. Um, so on these D shapes, you know, as I was kind of having my, my fever dream and, and knowing that this would kind of be one of my uh, extract sets out there, uh, it's a C shape. Cool. Okay what's the first thing that pops in my head when I've got a C shape and a D shape it's Ma. Now I did a, a video a while ago that talked about cosmic ghost Rider and how he fixes a lot of the problems on D shapes for guardians, just due to his mobility and range and, and just damage potential. Right. Um, I think Ma does a lot of that too. And I just wasn't sure to myself as I was kind of sitting around uh, thinking about it, uh, waking up in a cold sweat. It's like, Ma, oh, Ma, what do we do? Oh, Agent Venom. Oh, there it is. And so I, I had thought about something, and I had basically kind of come up with this strategy, and uh, it's what we'll be going over today, but it's, it's a core, uh, almost a D-shaped core, um, that I'm going to be probably trying to bring into most every D-shaped, uh, most all of my D-shaped games, except for maybe 15. Um but at 16 plus, this scales uh, exceptionally well. Um, and again, the reason that I wanted to get the other uh, threat value in here is because I think it's actually a little bit better at 19. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and show you why. So um, in typical fashion with these, uh, we're going to be breaking out uh, some of the different uh, teams that I can run on something like Riots. But uh, this would be a core for me. So you're going to have Star-Lord, Maw, Agent Venom. Um, these guys are all fairly mobile. Star-Lord's obviously a bring. Um, Ma, just due to what he can do on turn one to a D-shape, you just put him in the center of the board, he pressures the midline extract, and he pressures both flanks. Um, and there is a way that we can set this thing up to where I really think that it can just be of potentially uh, devastating effect uh you know to have ma work in conjunction with somebody else or to have him work in conjunction with somebody uh like an agent venom per se and so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of show that off here in a bit but this would be the core for me now the reason i say i don't want to play at 15 is because like you know my only other options are nebula and rocket uh i can't put rocket up on a secure and i can't put nebula up on a secure I don't know how the hell I would be winning uh, points here. Um, one thing you could do is you could swap out an Agent Venom and then go with maybe something more traditional like a Gamora. I still think you want to bring Maw on these D-shapes, and uh, he's almost an auto-include. But if I can avoid 15 on this, I probably will. But the other reason I'm not too worried about a 15 on this is because if I'm playing on 15, it's probably because I chose to, uh, because I don't have any 15s in my secures, right? So uh, I would be able to choose the, uh, the threat value. And at 15, if it's something on Gamma, you know, I can do something entirely different, right? So, or same with Sword, or I can just choose not to play at 15. So that being said, this scales really well with what it is that I want to be doing at a lot of threat levels. So at the 16 there, boom, Bill, then I add in my girl Nebs, right? 18, you just get... Uh, Drax and Nebs. And at 20, you get what would, in my opinion, kind of be like the premium uh, preferred player's choice, right? But uh, a lot of options there. So when you bring in this core, I think this is kind of your core tactic card. You're going to be looking at Shush, fantastic every time. 
Uh, for an assignment, fantastic. Uh, it, in and of itself, a an attack that gives you some, and you get a two power for an attack that costs three, which for a three cost attack is fantastic, by the way, still. Uh, and you get a free movement on top of it, all for two power. Like, pff, come on, it's too good. It's three attacks in one turn. Let's go. Uh, one of the better TTCs in the game. All it requires is a Star Lord around, and you can kind of go from there. Now, the reason why I've only got the three tactics cards selected is because, to be completely honest with you, I think you need to kind of choose what you're going to do with the other ones based on matchups. So if I'm playing against a Web Warriors team, I'm probably bringing Crew of the Milano to see if I can spoil their all webbed up turn, right? Um, if I'm bringing, uh, you know, other characters in here, I, if I'm thinking it's a, a Kingpin team, if I've got more models out there, I mean, maybe Galaxy's Greatest, but I, I don't anticipate this is going to be a big fighting type matchup where my models are getting dazed. The the strategy on this is for me to basically eliminate their models from range and then have Bill or Drax kind of survive. Um, maybe Sacrifice becomes like an auto-include, but I actually don't think Guardians or Galaxy's Greatest is just because a lot of the teams that take this there are Sam teams that'll take this, uh, and they can come with a little bit more punch than those other two teams that I've mentioned, and uh, they're very good on these D-shapes too. Storm is still good. Uh, there's still teams that can definitely play on these, it's just they don't come typically with enough punch uh, to scare me a bunch or to think that I'm going to have several models days in one go round and pop off Galaxy's Greatest. I mean, uh, All Webbed Up has potential to do that, but this is going to be all spread out. I don't know if it's going to be that effective, and, you know, if they do do it, they're going to get off, you know, maybe dazing one model and then Kuro the Milano comes out, worst case scenario, and I've ruined their signature TTC, that's their comeback mechanic. So probably going to bring Sacrifice more often than not, I guess is what I'm, the end of it all, what I'm saying. Uh, this is a C-shape. We do have the opportunity to do things with Bill. I don't think, even though we're playing at 19. Right, And even though I'm going to be bringing Bill into like 90% of the matchups, and honestly, Gamora is not bad here either. It really depends on what you think their backline model is going to be. If it's somebody like Shuri, who's got a range 5 attack, right, uh, who can sit roughly here and not be able to reach over or anything like that, if you end up with models that might be able to push you around and slow you down from getting onto that back point, uh, fine. Or if it's somebody like Shuri that can just walk over and push him off of a point, I just, I just maybe uh, it's it's worth it because you're just gonna get pushed off the point anyhow. But uh, I, I, I just, I just don't think it's worth worrying about. I think you can put Bill relatively in the center of the board and let him kind of take his medicine on which side he wants to pick and go for. Um, they are more than likely not going to go into the center of the board anytime soon when you put Maw there, unless they've got a safe extract plan of their own. Um, and if they do bring a safe extract plan, that's probably where it's going. Either way, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's a requirement, and I don't know if it's a good idea. They don't bring a lot of punch, like I said. And so if we can find a situation where... Well, first off, I should probably choose my board edge, but... Uh, we'll do that after this, but if Bill is, should be okay to be able to stand on the secure, and I think it's it's vital that we actually have him up on a secure, uh, because he needs to score that point, to be honest with you. Uh, we could maybe date somebody on the opposite side that he's not on. Uh, but if they bring up enough models, they're they're going to score. I don't want to go down two points on turn one. Uh, I, I know it sounds crazy for a Guardians team, you know, but if it's all avoidable, I just I don't want to do it. So I, I think Bill, he needs to get his hands on one of the extracts and he might just have to stand there and take his medicine. OK, uh, so I just I don't think this is a game for eyes, especially with not having priority. Now, it might be an excellent game for mission objective. Uh, because we really can't afford to be going down three to zero on the extract game. Uh, if they are running a kingpin team, there's going to be a rhino. Being able to mission objective something off with a rhino in the neighborhood uh, ruins this as a robbery. And again, it really prevents things from getting out of hand. You just can't afford 
to go down three zero. Uh, it just basically, if you if you lose that extract early in the game and they've got a three zero extract lead, you're now dealing with a team that is just going to be able to sit on their back point, right? Uh, and you're going to have to run into them. And as you're running into them, if you don't come in with the right action economy, they can start rotating around the board from there to over here and over here. And you just are not going to be able to outscore them. That little extra bit of healing, it's going to end the game a lot faster than you think. Um, and so if you lose an extract, you're just going to have to pivot into pure murder. Fuck points. Um, do everything you can to deny points, but I wouldn't even bother trying to score them myself. That being said, if you can bring something like Mission Objective, I think that's probably the take here. Um, so if I'm playing against Web Warriors, you know, we're probably looking at maybe something like Mission Objective or Sacrifice. Mission Objective and Crew. Uh, if I'm playing against, you know, other teams, Sacrifice, Mission Objective. But this is probably my five there. Okay. Okay. So I've already got a squad over here, as you can see, for my 19. So what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get these tactics cards to head over there. I think I messed up, though. Now, you can also opt to not do foreign assignment, because there is a strong possibility you're not going to have uh, Star-Lord and uh, Agent Venom around each other. Uh, so you could forego that, but I, I think... The potential of being able to pivot things into it and use it at a later point is still really strong. So uh, it's still worth bringing. Uh, I just I think it's a, a fantastic uh, tactics card. All right. Well, it looks like that didn't work. OK. Kind of had a feeling I goofed that up. It's not on you, TTS mod. It's on me. also uh I, I just i didn't even mention this but I, I bring brace no matter what i don't care who i'm playing uh it just it's not worth it i didn't it's not worth having somebody get thrown me into somebody else there's some sort of collision damage that's going to happen at some point it's just too efficient of a card uh to not be brought um and i i again I think if you're considering yourself a competitive player, you're going to play against people. They're going to bring throws. It's just going to happen. Uh, okay. So we're going to get these picked up because I forgot to do my board edge. My fault. Now, we've selected 19. And now when we're looking at this board, there's a couple of things that we want to consider. Okay. Uh, when we decide on what edge we're going to play on. So first and foremost... Uh, and looking at things as they are right now, I see a nice open deployment area, which is going to allow me to make sure that I get Maw wherever I want him, right? And he's really the key here. Now, we're going to have, uh, you know, the d shape's going to be roughly there, here, and what was it? You know, maybe something like here, and then there. So, we want Maw to be deploying about there. That way you can do the hop forward and cover the middle, but... Also, the only sizable terrain that's in this game, okay, it's here and here. You've got your two size fours, and then these are all size three, but these size threes are in the middle of the board, okay? There's another size three, but the only, like, worthwhile terrain that you can't get your hands on is right here, if you're Ma. So what I, when I say can't get your head on is because I think I want to rotate this board edge. All right, so looking at this now, I got to imagine to myself, can Ma fit in with this range three between here and here and still get me the center of the board? I think the answer is yes. And I've got the terrain I want with Ma. This is massive, okay? These are all good. And, and when I'm trying to set things up, I want to set things up in a way where I can maybe have an opponent think they're safe to come up to a uh, center line. And both of these offer what might appear to be a safe area to go up and stand without using an eyes play. Uh, I want them to use their eyes play if they've got one on the middle. Uh, if they don't have an eyes play, if it's a Web Warriors team, odds are they're just going to take an amazing Spider-Man, grab the middle point, and go skeeter off somewhere. Anyhow, uh, that doesn't bother me a lot. He's a five threat. He generates power now. 
he's uh, a mess to deal with defensively. I'd much rather them try to come up to their flanks with their weaker characters. Uh, and the reason I say that, and so we're going to give these uh, a drop, but the reason I say that is because, like, these appear to be safe, right? These appear to be safe places to be. With Ma and Agent Venom, they are not. Uh, and the reason I say Agent Venom is because, you know, this cover, it's irrelevant against him. Okay, so in coming out with my deployment, you always want out, you always want to start off with the most obvious things first, right? And so, Ma on the center of the board. If you've seen my Ma videos, uh, or my Ma video, you'll know that in one Space Gem forward, I can double tap this point, okay? One Space Gem to this side, and one medium move, I can get off a shot there, and I can hit that person with a terrain throw. Uh, so, if that person is not on... If they're somehow or for some reason there or not on top of that car, they're going to get a size four thrown into them. Okay. If they're on the backside of this car and I walk them over it, they're getting a size four thrown into them. If they're on this point and I have the ability to be able to get into uh, a spot where I have line of sight, they're getting this thing thrown into them. And now they've got no cover for the rest of the game. Now, if they come over here on this side and they've that's all they've given me by the time it's time to activate Maw, and in this case, I actually want to go second to last with Maw. Uh, or at least when somebody comes up and grabs something, because I need to choose a side with Bill uh, first. And it, more than likely, the place that I'm going to want Bill to be is here. Uh, I don't want to be necessarily throwing this terrain with Ma. It's too small. I've got this to throw. I've got this to throw, this to throw. If I need to, I can probably get my hands on that. Uh, and I can leave this here to have Bill just kind of maintain cover. And if I need to overload this side, Agent Venom can just shoot any model there, and they're not going to get cover anyhow, right? So uh, we put Ma in the middle. You might get your counter with your eyes play. I think they're going to make sure they get that, okay? That being said, what do we go ahead and do next? Okay, here's where things start getting a little bit tricky. Because you have to try to pick a side. Now, they're probably going to go ahead and they're going to show you their eyes play if they've got one. As their obvious thing that they're going to do. Because no matter where they deploy that person, that's their first activation. And so you can basically kind of choose, you know, where and when... Uh, to deploy your models around that. Now, if they don't deploy them first, there's a couple of things that can be a bit of a dead giveaway on your eyes plays. Okay, uh, eyes plays or Amazing Spider-Man or any of that stuff, they need to line up directly, almost across or really close to it from the actual points. Okay. Now, in this instance, there's no real terrain blocking them from doing that. Which, like I kind of mentioned, is fine for them. Sometimes with some of these terrains, if you can find ways to block one of those, uh, that can really mess with people uh, and their plans or ability to get onto something on turn in the middle or on the sides, whatever it is. And that'll give you a lane to be able to do it yourself. But when you see this, if they don't deploy them first, if you see them starting to put models a little bit off center, right? If they're deploying somebody like here instead, they're leaving space to be able to have the eyes play here. Does that make sense? You know, like they're leaving a spot for that. Okay. They don't need to put people directly across from this. So if you start seeing a lot of this, that's, that's fine. Okay. But we know what we're going to do with our ma. Now, as far as for us, I really like this and the way that agent venom can interact with it. Um, they might be thinking they're safe over there because of that cover. It's a, looks really appealing for a lot of characters in this game. Uh, I think that's an excellent spot for Agent Venom to line up. Now, the second person that I want to go with, uh, or third, would be Star-Lord. Now, if they still haven't given away, and honestly, it doesn't really matter where we put Star-Lord here, uh, but that's a good spot. This is fine. If I can get him in there back to where he was. I had a, had a good thing going on and I messed it up. Cool. There we go. All right. So, 
these are all of our kind of back point type people. Now, the reason that I've got these guys back here is because Star-Lord can hit and run off at this and that, but I think what's going to make this actually special and actually work is Ma's ability to be able to either activate early and be able to gem these guys forward uh, to kind of help them get around and do some pretty cool things, or, uh, you know, gem himself, activate late, do his kind of double attack and then gem himself onto the point while these two are able to blast off. So, uh, with all the movement abilities on this back point, potentially you're going to have a lot of opportunity to overload these sides and just try to kill things that are on them. Okay. And then you can go take them over for yourself and start scoring points. If they have given you a look on this, anyhow, you've got, you know, maybe you've been given your eyes. Look, maybe they've given you two off centers. Now you've done your star Lord. At this point, I would start to see, like, if they haven't done an eyes look, it's probably going to come on their third one, if they're five wide. If they're only four wide, you know, it's going to be one of these. I, I still would say that 90% of players will take the middle. Um, and if they don't, I'd really be tempted to do it myself, okay? But uh, you need to now choose a side where your bill is going to be... Uh, active where he is going to exist. Uh, this is a good spot because again, uh, agent venom can cover that really well. Uh, and he's going to be able to have Ma around. You could just completely overwhelm this side of the board. And, you know, we can do two things over here with the models that we've got uh, on this side, potentially. And it's not saying that star Lord and agent venom can't switch spots. Uh, but I do like this look over here. Now, bill going over here, It'd be a very safe spot for him. He could potentially take away some line of sight because uh, he's only a size two and really set himself up for a, a really good one-on-one -on -one situation there, and which is typically a situation I would favor Bill in, or at least a stalemate. Uh, but that's what we're, we're hoping for. Now, if we see a situation where it's looking like too much of a stalemate, we're going to have to break that thing up. But it really all depends on how we can get our bill deployed. So with us, I think we're going to go with our bill, you know, here. Uh, I'm going to take a really quick look at something. And if you're ever messing around in TTS or you're messing around on a board, right? One of the things that I was kind of thinking about when I was deploying these guys and I mentioned early on is like, all right, how far can I reach with bill and what can I do? I don't think this is going to work at all, <laughs> but... Maybe if I'd given him the spot where Agent Venom is. Yeah. Uh, again, I think we definitely want Maw dead center no matter what. But if I'd given Bill this spot here, or maybe if that dumpster wasn't there, maybe we've got some action with Bill to where we have basically a choice of going to either of these secures. I don't actually anticipate wanting to attack with him for any reason. Nope, we won't reach it either. Okay, so that's not an option. So it isn't possible. Now, I would love to tell you that I have all these things measured and thought out when I do these videos all the time, but I think, honestly, sometimes one of the best things you can do uh, when you're trying to figure out strategy is just stuff like that. Now... I guess we'll call that like an impromptu opportunity to have a bit of a different discussion on just, you know, how or why uh, I think I've been able to come up with some of these strategies or different stuff is that I will literally go and do this on, on boards and, uh, and try to just tinker with things. Let's see what's possible. Um, there are, you know, some really great mathematical, uh, situations where you could just flat out know this in advance and, uh, I am not that far advanced. I play a little bit more off a of feel um, and look, which is probably to my detriment, but I digress. Uh, if they've gone with their eyes play over here, or if they've delayed it, this is now their fourth activation. You could see it come out at this point. Uh, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> okay. Because uh, that's going to cause a, a pivot. We need to get one of these extracts. Now, it's entirely possible to do. 
Uh, we just not might not like how we're going to have to go about doing it if they've waited and they take this from our bill. Uh, bill is the guy we want to have that. Now, we have options because that eyes play is going to come out first. Ma is a safe extract play. But if they don't give us an opportunity to get onto one of these, maybe, you know, we can save that. You know, maybe we use this as an opportunity to space gem somebody like an Agent Venom uh, and give him an opportunity to go and grab that extract. Or we use this as an opportunity to space gem somebody like Bill and then give him an opportunity to uh, rotate around the board, right? You could take Maw, walk forward, get him into the position that you want for turn one, uh, start gemming uh, Bill around, okay? I'm wondering if I do that, if uh, we can get Bill. I'm going to do it again, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. I'm wondering if I had done a better job of deploying him off of that dumpster. These are all the options that Ma can give a give a team. Uh, and why I was really wanting to mess around some on these D-shapes, right? So I think we're barely good there. Okay. So... I wonder if you guys are kind of wondering or seeing what I was thinking here. It's like, okay, well, does this work? Gem him over like that. Run up and grab the middle with Maw. And then we just rotate Bill like a so. <laughs> yes, that does work. Uh, so pretty cool idea there. Uh, worse, it's it's kind of a worst case scenario, and the only reason you would have to do that is if it looks like they're going to be using their eyes play in front of Bill. And the reason I keep saying that eyes play is because we we can't end up with a situation to where on turn one they just grab something like that and just run backwards from Bill. Uh, I want Bill to be in a situation to where he can pressure somebody that's going to be holding on to an extract and not running away from it because what can end up happening with somebody like Bill who, who is our big secure daddy is that if he doesn't have an extract and he's only scoring one point, he will just get stuck there because he doesn't have the action economy to get away or off of that. Uh, it could be a reason why you could make an argument for Gamora here. Uh, but what I what I envision and what I want to be doing with Bill is I want him to be ending up in brawls to where he's throwing one model off the point and he's, you know, tying it up with the other and we're killing the other one over here, stuff like that. Uh, Gamora's fine in those situations, just isn't as survivable as Bill. So um, either way, to make sure that we get ourselves an opportunity to, to kind of really bully this point and back Bill up, uh, this is what we're going to do with Nebula. And we're going to line her up on a side that, you know, can support one of these other two, uh, or where it looks like the opponent is going to be standing, right? Um, to dissuade them from coming up and grabbing that extract to kind of make sure that Bill can. And this is what I was talking about and why it's so important that they don't put their eyes play there. If they put their eyes play and they haven't given or shown their hand on it yet, then you're going to be in a situation where you've, you've got to, be a little bit more flexible with some of the stuff that I've shown you now. You should be able to kind of guess where it is by that point, but some of these other teams, like these Web Warrior teams that'll be on this crisis, like, they have the ability to take their two medium moves and get uh, from an offset uh, kind of mid-center point from here to there or there, uh, you know, from here to there or there, right? Uh, the problem is, is that that's not an eyes play and they're going to get stuck there. So if they do that in the middle of the board, Ma is going to kill them. They're probably not going to just give up that point. So I, I will stress again and again that as much as I'm talking about like them taking away the eyes play and taking away like the strategy of this uh, and doing it over there on the corner and then backing away, fine. You know, we can rotate this thing around and do stuff differently. But if that happens, there's a good chance that we're going to potentially be able to do put ourselves in a situation to get two of the extracts ourselves, Okay. Um, because they're going to have to come up and it's just, it's not going to work. Uh, so if the safe extract play is there, then I think what we do, and if they take this away from bill, 
Okay. I have thought this through in my head. I think what we do... Well, all right, we're deployed now. If the safe extract play comes, or if we know where it's going to be, then we don't put Nebula there. We'll put her opposite of wherever we think it's not, right? I just... I don't think she needs to be in the middle, but she needs to be pretty much in a spot to where she can affect... Uh, whatever model comes up onto a point, and typically I want her to be supporting offensively any point that Bill is standing on. Now, if that means that we need to double move her and rotate her to the other side of the board, fine. They should be giving up their eyes play at some point, and that whatever that is, we take Nebula and put her here. Okay, but we're gonna pretend that they do what I think would be the smart thing and go in the center of the board. Now, if they didn't go in the center of the board, I will show you this play right now because it's fresh in my head and. Uh, you know, it, it makes sense to me. So this will be our turn one play if they come up, use their eyes play on this, okay? So this will take this off, give it to them. Bummer. That's going to put our bill in a rough spot. So we take Maw. doesn't really matter. I just need to make sure that I'm within range three of Bill. Make sure that I'm still onto my medium point there. Cool. And it's at this point that you can take your Bill and plop him here, or at least close to it. Bingo, bingo. Now with Maw, you can grab this. It's not ideal, but it exists. Uh, and I think if it gives us an extract lead, I can live with it. So that would be his three points. If they go and run over and grab this now, oh well, right? I think I can live with that. Reason being is because we can move over with our bill and he should have some of the storm range on most models not on the full backside which is unfortunate it can all be set up for next turn because they are going to be there then you just set up for next turn and if they've done that, I think you just abandon the one side and it'll force them to pivot. But if they don't, if they've got priority or if you have priority, if you have priority, this model's probably dead. If they've got priority and they don't activate and they activate this model just to get that extract out of there, I think I just take Maw and I just go and bully the back line, right? But we're going to kind of get done messing around with the potential worst case scenario here. And we'll show you the actual play that I, I wanted to to get into with this. Uh, sorry for the uh, the worst case scenario ADD thing. Uh, I do like working through this stuff. Um, I think the reason why I throw this on Twitch is so that you know, in case people decide to just randomly notice that I'm doing this, like they can join in and talk amongst chat, and I can go back and look at all the uh, the dumb things that are uh, potentially being said. But I also don't mention. Or give people any advance notice when I'm doing it, so kind of hard to expect much out of people there. Uh, another random tangent. All right, let's get this all fixed. So what it is that I really want to do, okay? Let's give Maul his beloved power back. Uh, you know what? I actually. Don't think we're doing any attacks with Agent Venom on turn one. Nebula might, though. Bill is going to be defensive, but if I do things right with Nebula, she'll be getting her rerolls anyhow. So, all right, we'll go with that. Okay. So, we'll redrop these tokens. most sensible thing again for me they take the middle oh well uh that'll give ma essentially not much to do there if that happens i think we immediately go with our bill 
Because again, you know, we're going to be dealing with an opponent that has priority. Uh, that's how we ended up on this godforsaken secure in the first place, right? Now, you could talk about having Bill up here on this building to where he might be in a position to, I don't know, summon the storm on somebody that's standing around back here. But to be honest with you, the only thing I want Bill to do over here is score two points around. So I don't necessarily care for him to be able to do anything in return. Uh, Bill is the cybernetic horse wolf god of scoring VPs. Uh, I don't even recall like Guardians of the Galaxy even being able to score VPs before Bill came around. Uh, it's just something that he's just extraordinarily good at. It's probably why he's one of the most splash models in the game. Uh, is he, you know, the top, top model in the game? No. He's extraordinarily good uh, and well-rounded. So <clears throat> the threat of this, and if they're aware that Ma can actually mess somebody up for going over here, uh, should keep people off of that point. Uh, maybe for this entire first round. Uh, this should have gone over to them off of a uh, turn one. The turn two play is going to be, they're going to have their backliner probably come up or they might look at this cover that we've shown them that they can think they have. And they might be thinking that they're safe to have this. Okay. Uh, again, they are not um, for myriad reasons, but you know, it could be that they come up and grab this because they want to get the extract wheat. The whole point of this mall list and setting this up is that I am trying to do things in a way that makes it look as if they can get their extract parity that they so desperately want to get to us on this secure, but I just don't think that they can. Uh, and if they don't go over there and grab this, right, with this uh, turn, and if they opt to do the safe thing and just put their back model sitter, their wongs, their shuris, their, uh, you know, maybe a miles or... Uh, spider Gwens, right? If they want to just go ahead and put them back there uh, because it's safe and sensible, that's fine. I am happy to go over here with Ma and grab this, okay? And Ma will absolutely reach it. With that being said, I think that they're going to want to get greedy. They're going to see this cover and they're going to go for it. So that's going to give us two options. We do the Ma play. Do we trust our 70% chance to get the trigger? Um, or do we set up Agent Venom to be able to do some things uh, into it, uh, into this model over here himself, okay? So, just kind of showing this off real quick. If Ma just options, or opts to send uh, Venom over instead of himself, or if he's somehow, or for some reason, potentially given a target, uh, that's a thing. We can also think about, like, well, what are we going to do with Star-Lord? How are we going to score a back point? I think more often than not on this situation, that's going to be Star-Lord's Star job on turn one. I think once he gets his hit-and-run train going, we can start doing some other cool stuff. And Maul really opens up a lot of that. But I think we just go ahead and try to see what we can do with Maw first, okay? So first things first, if they come over there and grab that, There's that. We're going to take our space gem. You always want to take it, and then you want to try to, at least on TTS, you grab it, then you just drag it over like that. It's always going to give you a really good straight line onto it. That's going to be, for the most part, your uh, your best opportunity. Now, I should probably just get a dummy model over there. Um, who is somebody that they're likely to put on this side? If it's a Web Warriors team, it'll probably be Miles. If it's, you know, a Kingpin team, you might see the... Uh, the kingpin of crime himself. He doesn't get cover over there, uh, but he could come out. Uh, or you get somebody that could go over there and have cover. 
Uh, it was like a kingpin type person that would run over there. They put Bullseye on the back. I don't know, maybe Hood. Hood seems like a good candidate uh, because of his little transformation thing. And he'd be good against Mystic. Maybe they're taking a look at me and thinking, oh, it's the it's the Maw fanatic. Got to make sure we got Hood out there with his three Mystic defense. You know, because that'll save us. Um, so maybe it's Hood, though. Uh, or it's it's whomever. It doesn't uh, doesn't matter a bunch. But uh, now I, I I jest in the hoods uh, in discussion of hood, but I he's fantastic. He's one of my favorite three threats. Um, but anyhow, we go ahead take our medium move. Now, if it's miles, you're gonna see that we're gonna end up short. Okay. And if that's the case, and if you're Maw, like, I wouldn't even bother with the Space Gem. Uh, I think what you just go ahead and do is that you Space Gem Agent Venom over. Uh, that way Agent Venom can do a medium move and then uh, get onto Miles. Um, you might even use Maw to sit on the back point and then let Star-Lord double move into this area before uh agent venom activates that way you can set up for a turn turn one for an assignment into somebody like miles uh on agent venom uh and we can really punish him uh for that and more importantly so that we can get up onto the point next to him and so i'll show you how that would kind of look actually since i'm discussing it but we'll just pretend that hood is miles so if it's miles and not hood what you're going to want to do is probably this. You're going to want to space jam him over. And then just take your maw and as crazy as it sounds, cut your losses for this turn. This is going to allow for, you know, this could come up here, whatever. You just take this. Find yourself that magical... Like so. Let's see where he's at. Realize, alright, we're not going to get there. Do I want to be within range next turn? I guess I don't care much. But this is going to be a lot more important to me. Is that I want... Agent Venom to be within three of Miles and two of Star Lord. Okay. So now we can say to ourselves, if this is roughly going to be where Agent Venom has to go after his first move action, right? Then we can afford to go ahead and tell ourselves that Star Lord needs to go to roughly here. Uh, it's not necessarily about being able to hit Miles, so we just go like that. Now that's set up. So they could decide that they want to test the water over here. At that point, hopefully it's not somebody that, uh, you know, has a push or something. If it is, like you see that there's a Gwen over here, somebody that can maybe push Bill off of the point. You could just opt to just take Nebula up and backstop instead of this. Because this can wait at this point, right? This can wait till like your last two activations of the round. If they bring up a model up here in front of Bill and they don't do anything like attack him or try to push him off or do anything, you just take Nebula up and you start trying to go ham. I mean, they're going to have cover, but she still hits like a friggin' a brick shit house. She's a ton of bricks. So uh, either way, uh, that's all there for you as far as options. But you could do this if they just don't want to bother with him at all. Or if they're just trying to set up a situation to where he can get pushed, you just backstop him. Uh, now he ain't going anywhere. They might not even mess with this. And honestly, if Bill sits over there for an entire game, or at least half of the game scoring two points, I don't hate it. I just need to make sure I get my back point here, and then we need to go bully the shit out of whoever's on the other one. And this is how you do that. So if it's a Miles, you just move forward. Now we just start shooting. Okay. And I probably should have just gone to the maximum extent. The reason that we put Star-Lord there is this. We're going to have that within range 2. All I need right now is to generate one power. 
So Miles isn't going to have rerolls. He has no cover. It is just going to be a straight five on three with a winging it token that should be averaging uh, 2.72, I want to say, or excuse me, 1.72. Uh, but let's just go ahead and run the maths over at uh, our sponsor, uh, cerebro.mcp.com or cerebromcp.com so excuse me it's 1.70 now if you add in a wingnet token onto that 2.43 as far as average expected damage into somebody with three defense okay so we're going to get our power regardless if we get that extra power we're immediately spending two and we're going to shoot him again with the seven dice energy that seven dice energy, if it doesn't have rerolls, is going to be good for about 2.7. So if you did rerolls on the first one and you didn't do on the second, that's averaging almost six damage. So it's plus one more than what Miles has. So odds are you're taking him out. Now, if that happens, he just drops the extract. It goes over here. You can't pick it up. Woe is me. But you do get the free move onto the point. Uh, which is going to, if there's another model there, you can either contest it now or just out and out win it. If we've got priority, we're going to get that uh, extract in our hands next round. We just go ahead, attack, web line out of there. And then we can activate Maw and do some other stuff. Uh, so we'll just show you what that looks like real quick before I get back to things. So he goes up here, gets himself some cover, gets priority next round. Uh, if he doesn't kill Miles, that's fine. We still contest it. Maybe we kill him now and get it off him. We double attack, maybe web line away. Okay. Star Lord's maybe already done stuff, but either way, we just web line right up and out of there. Fine. Do things the old-fashioned way. And he's going to be set up to be able to get himself around. Now, Star-Lord, if he gets pressured by anybody or if he's got somebody around here, he can cover a lot of that himself. Just not the absolute far side. But he can cover this really well. Uh, anything there, and honestly, where we had him earlier, he does cover much better. Uh, so he should be able to get most models back there. He gets a shot off next round, he just does one of these. All right? At this point, you can take your option of which direction you want to go with Maw, uh, but he reaches a bunch of stuff. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So we're going to turn back on deployment. Go... Back to here. Back to the beginning. We're going to recreate the board state before I kind of went off onto that tangent. And we're going to just go and say that that is, in fact, hood. Okay? So what we want to do is we can just go ahead and take Ma, do our space gem, do our medium move. It is, in fact, hood. I think we just want to make sure that we're outside of range 3. Or if it's not hood, if it's another range 3 type character, just make sure you're outside of range 3 or that they might have to spend some power to at least move towards you to be able to hit you. Um, and then, yeah. So that's the two power gone there. And we just go ahead and hit him with the uh, Black Tongue. Now, if this works, he's going to move. Now, unfortunately, if it is Hood, remember, he's going to transform. And there's not really a lot you can do about it from him getting able to go back up onto there. That's going to save him from a terrain throw. So that would be unfortunate if it is Hood. But if it's not Hood, or Ant-Man, or uh, one of these other characters... They're going to get walked over here. Okay, and that's going to set them up for this. 
Let's be smart about it. Get Star Lord over here. And I don't think I can reach this person with Star Lord, but if I can, great. All right, then we pop a shot. Okay. Come up with Agent Venom if they're still alive. Kind of catch my drift. You get your shot into them. I would save the foreign assignment. You'd probably take them out at this point. Because Ma is going to throw this. If they didn't bring Brace, they're dead uh, already. But you can see about, you know, if that model's still alive or there's another model around here, uh, you just pop your shot off. And then, bingo, bingo. So, a lot of options there. And you've kind of overwhelmed that side of the board. You've got this protected with Bill and Nebula. So, if we're foregoing the back point, sure, that's fine. Uh, if you don't want to forego the back point, then you just take Star-Lord and you put him back there. Okay? And you let him score the point. But I think we can really mess up that person over there pretty bad if we want to. But Agent Venom is really the key on it. They don't give us something there, which I, I think a lot of teams or a lot of maybe average players or maybe less experienced players is probably the better term, right? They might give you that. And if they do, cool. Uh, it's not the the most known thing uh, about what Ma does on this stuff. It's kind of why I think he's got some legs on a D. Um, but that's all your turn one potential there. And it, it, if we kind of just go back and recap what we're trying to set up here, it's really all about getting Bill or Gamora or whatever your beater model, your Drax, whoever's going over to a side, like we want them to be in like ideally the best defensive situation possible. Uh, we want to hope that they're going to use their eyes play on the middle. If they don't use their eyes play on the middle, uh, because of the threat that Ma represents, then, then maybe Ma does that for himself. And then he sets up other people to go and pressure uh, the outsides. And when I say Maud does that for himself, he just goes up and grabs a thing. Uh, again, there just aren't enough characters in this game that can attack him on turn one that are going to do any worthwhile damage. Nobody's going to really be able to bypass him. It's going to take some weird advanced R&D stuff. And uh, against most teams that would be running riots, I'd feel pretty comfortable in my ability to put Ma up in the center of the board there and stand on that car and say, all right, guys, do your worst, right? So um, the other thing that, you know, you can potentially do and set up here is you take your Ma and you're going to, obviously, you're going to move over. You're going to do all that stuff. You're going to pressure this. And like a really cool combination that I was wanting to uh, to try to put together here was with Agent Venom and Ma. And so, this is mostly something that you can do later in the rounds, and why I think this uh, this list kind of has some legs on it. So, when we're doing this, we want to start being able to kind of envision what this is going to look like, okay? And what when, it, when I say what it's going to look like, how it interacts with models and how they're going to be moving around. So, his ability to place within range 3 is something like that. We're going to know that in order to get him back onto the point, Maybe it looks like the furthest he can go is down there. Is there a world where we can get him back onto the point and he can shoot at somebody that is over on a flank? And it doesn't look like it. And what I mean by that is, uh, is Agent Venom. What we do have the opportunity to do with both Agent Venom and Star-Lord, though, and the reason that I really like this is that, you know, once Ma chooses a side, he's just going to sit off at a distance and just blast on people. Uh, and ideally kill him. And then he's going to have these other models that can rotate onto and off of the point, and he can help him get back there himself. If they start trying to pressure our back line, uh, you know, we can do some things to kind of reset the board and all this other stuff. But him being able to go over there and just shut this person down, potentially move into their spot or have somebody else move into their spot is great. But I love this setup with these models. And this is why they're my core of, you know, Star-Lord and Agent Venom is because 
whichever one's on the point for the, the beginning of their activation, like you can literally with somebody like star Lord, you know, all he has to do is move forward over here. If this terrain is, you know, maybe gone by then, or maybe there's a model standing here, <clears throat> he's going to have line of sight. You just spend for a hit and run and you pop back with agent venom. If he starts off an activation here, or if he starts off an activation, uh, you know, at least near enough. Yeah, because that would get him back onto a point. If he has the opportunity to shit, sit somebody that's standing up there, which this would do it, he could just, he could do that. You could put Maw, which is probably where Maw would end his turn, right? On turn one. So now you got Star Lord sitting on it, but if Star Lord doesn't have the opportunity to hit and run, and he just goes up there and does his shooting, then ends his turn, you take Agent Venom, gets his two shots off. Now he has the opportunity to, to web line. If he doesn't generate the power, you just take Maw. Right? And so that's kind of what I'm talking about is like, you just get a ton of options. Now, if you have this set up on this turn and you activate Maw first, now you just space gem Agent Venom over to just set him up for action economy. Like, if we don't kill this model, but we get our wild trigger, cool. Right? So we get a shot off with Agent Venom. Maybe he doesn't obviously get on top of Ma's base, but we get a shot off with Agent Venom. He drops his extract. We move up, grab it, and we can always hip. And so it just, it sets up so much for this team because now we've essentially done what it is that I always want to do with Guardians is that I can turn it into a two lane game. Okay. Uh, I can get this, uh, this parody, right? And now they've got to play into me. I can abandon this side. I don't care about this. We just keep winning this. And now we just start castling up. But with this, list and the movement flexibility of these characters all this stuff you have the ability to kind of pivot around with star lord and agent venom right which side do we want to go with now going into turn two with like bill and and some of this other stuff i think bill has got to be your last activation every round you need him to activate as close to last as possible because He's probably going to have two models on him, and if he doesn't, and they're just going to let him score, cool, right? If that's the case, we don't need to be doing this with Star-Lord. All we need to be doing is killing whatever's over here. If they see that and give it to us, and we've got the one extract, well, then we're winning anyhow, right? Uh, against a lot of teams that are that are pretty good on this Riot stuff, Agent Venom isn't that bad because they mostly have physical attacks, uh, Agent Venom is like, <laughs> uh, obviously, um, as the regular Venom is, very good at killing spiders, right? So, um, you you just there's a lot of like really really cool synergies here that can actually work out on a D. Uh, I think the pressure on T1 uh, or some of the flexibility uh, from the deployment or the threat that a, a Ma or a Cosmic Ghost Rider can pose. Uh, it's fantastic for your team, but the the extra little bits of flexibility and extra bits of damage, like being able to just opt to just double walk with a maw and throw this building at somebody, is great uh, on turn one. It's just great extra bits of damage. You know, um, you can now take a model over there and just start blasting away. Uh, there's, you know, a nebula could just move forward and hit them. We can get that extract drop. Bill can walk up and grab it. Right? There's there's so many different things that you can do with that. Um, with the flexibility that Ma provides you in, into the later game that uh, hopefully if nothing else from anybody might be able to take away from this is that you can be imaginative uh, as a Guardians player um, and Cosmic Ghost Rider and these characters, these models like really open up uh, a lot of uh, opportunity for us to actually be okay on D's. But it really comes down to the, the fundamental principles of we want to be winning, you know, two major points of the board and 
when we have models like Bill or a Drax, like they're just so critically important to us. And fortunately they're very tough and that's why they're critically important. People just don't necessarily want to attack them. They can look at it as kind of a, a sunk cost fallacy. Like it's just, they've sunk cost into it and they may continue to do it, but uh, they just don't want to do it. Right. So all that being said, like it's, it's really potentially a, a strong, strong setup. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up in the, uh, uh, the chat. Um, you know, the comment section here on uh, YouTube or, uh, you know, find me over on discord. Uh, you know, this is a, a fun roster, um, for a lot of this stuff. Uh, I think it, it scales really nicely. You can avoid 15, uh, you can avoid all of that stuff uh, extremely well. So it's, it's just uh, a lot better than I, I, I had thought, you know, this has a lot of legs. So I'm really, I like this idea. I, I think it can pivot. Well, uh, if they pivot away from you again, like now we're winning the secures and I think venom is, is a really good key here. So, uh, to kind of review things, uh, and just to completely close it out, this would be your core on it. I don't, I just don't think we want to play it on 15. Now, if we're got research station, then I think we just focus on the researcher in the back point and let them deal with that. But, uh, uh, I think the list can kind of remain the same in a lot of ways, but there's obviously different ways that we can do things between bill, but, uh, I think Gamora, there's a strong case for her. I, I like the way that Nebula plays on this, just as a, a backup piece for Bill. Uh, she, d she just demands attention over there. Um, and if you activate Bill last, or have the opportunity to activate last, he just throws whatever models off the point there after he hits him a few times, and uh, Nebula just gets rid of the other one. So it sets you up in a situation to get you that two VPs there. And uh, it's real good, good look. So, um, and Nebula can back up Drax, obviously. And if we're having to play at 17, then I guess Bill's going to have to be on his own, but he's got Star-Lord for backup if you want it, or uh, any number of different things. And you can pivot this different ways, but you really want to get that one beater model up there and hold that thing. Just stand your ground and, you know, try to do everything you can to make sure that they're able to live there. If you need to pivot some more firepower that direction, that's fine. But ideally, we're using this side as a kill side. It's it's not necessarily about scoring that secure. We need to get whatever extract that's there off of that person. If they rotate the extract over to their back point of the board, I think we just go ahead and rotate our team over and we just kill what's over here. Uh, and then, you know, we can really kind of just go about firmly establishing ourselves uh, in that spot. And we can just continue to work on this part of the board if we need to, or we can rotate onto their back point where they've already kind of given us a, uh, we'll just say like a kill box. Right. But yeah, that's uh, that's it folks. Uh, and I think I've covered everything. Yeah. I think that's it. That I think I'm done. I think I'm done. It's good. I feel good. All right. Cheers. See you guys.